Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tosh Berman. I'm here for Artbook DAP, and I'm here to discuss a new catalog that just came out, published by MoMA, Museum of Modern Art, called Felix Fedden, The Anarchist and the Avant-Garde. Fenyon was born on June 22nd, 1861. He passed away on February 29th, 1944. Fenyon was art critic, art dealer, art collector, coined the name Neo-Impressionism, and anarchist. Equally famous for all, <laughs> all those categories. Um, at the time, he was working at the War Office in Paris, but he was also an anarchist at the same time. Obviously, the War Office did not know he was an anarchist. Um, Fenyon worked in the underground of sorts, and um, he did participate in street demonstrations. He did participate in writing literature for anarchists, uh, for their pamphlets, uh, for their propaganda. And at the th that time, there was a series of violent demonstrations as well as bombings. And in Paris at the time, it was going through a huge political turmoil of, uh, of, of dealing with the economy, uh, class system, and such subject matter. And uh, Fenion was very much a strong anarchist, a very strong left-wing anarchist. And... Um, and though he did work at the war office, there is a strange juxtaposition that uh, he can somehow figure, maybe he's working for the enemy, for instance. But nevertheless, him and 30 other anarchists were arrested for a series of bombings that took place in Paris. Fenyon specifically was arrested for a bombing of a restaurant that politicians went and ate at this location. And though no one was hurt from this particular bombing, there was structural damage. And therefore, Fenyon and 29 other, the 30, were arrested for these bombings. And Fenyon was not, was charged for the bombing, but he was not, he was found not guilty. And what he's famous for in this trial, and what made him endearing to the reporters and to the people who went to the trial was his witty answers to the prosecutor's questions. For instance, the prosecutor, you know, he's been questioning Fennin. It has been established that you surrounded yourself with Cohen and Ortov. These are two terrorists, his fellow terrorists. And Fennin answered, one can hardly be surrounded by two persons. You need at least three. And then the prosecutor said, You were seen conferring with them behind a lamppost. Fenyon answered, A lamppost is round. Can you, Honor, tell me where behind a lamppost is? <laughs> <laughs> he had like an Oscar Wilde wit. <laughs> so he was, either through his performance of the trial, or this didn't have enough evidence, he was let go. Fenanon, though his name was known as being a terrorist or as, a, uh, as an anarchist, he's also and his life to art collecting and writing about art. Uh, one of the things he, we didn't discover, but he discovered an artist by the name of Georges Sorrow, who is famous for being the head honcho of pointism, which is a format of painting where you paint by dots, and as one looks close to the painting, you see something, but when you walk away from the painting or you put your head back, the picture emerges more fully. And um, this is sort of the key post-Impressionism work, um, especially the famous Cicero painting of the landscape of the park where the people hanging out of the park, for instance. A very famous painting owned by Philip Pagnon. He owned that painting. And what's... Interesting, Fenyon really devoted to the avant-garde of his time and period. Uh, when he, while he was working at the War Office, he was promoting and editing the works of Arthur Rimbaud and La Tremont, 
Uh, Fernand was also uh, very close to artists like Matisse, who he purchased Matisse works as well as promote Matisse. And even more interestingly so, for me at least, he promoted the Italian Futurists in Paris. At the time, uh, the Futurists only were known in Italy and had trouble getting their work and art and their manifestos out, out outside of Italy. But uh, Fenyon, uh, either as an art lover or an anarchist of sorts, even though the Futurists are right-wing, and, and uh, Fenyon was clearly a left-wing activist, um, he promoted the Italian Futurists in Paris. So that made the Futurists known all throughout Europe and then eventually the United States and so on. So uh, he was also one of the first people in France to collect works, artworks from Africa. And he did not look at these works as being Negro art, as they called it, or even like black art, but actually he preferred to call it art from far away places. And he uh, tried to organize these artwork that he collected to hopefully be shown at museums like the Louvre Museum. Uh, he didn't want works to be shown in specialty type of museums. He wants these works to be seen as contemporary art. Now, what's interesting about this exhibit and this catalog, Felix Pignon, the anarchist and the avant-garde, is that, as you know, most museum shows are devoted to one artist or a group of artists or a theme of sorts. But what's interesting about the, the MoMA show, which actually came from France, Trapped of MoMA, is that it's, it's a show focusing on Fenyon as an art critic, curator, and a behind-the-scenes person, as well as an anarchist. And he's not an artist. This is the first time there's been a retrospective of a person who is not an artist at MoMA, maybe. He's a scenester. He's a behind-the-scenes person. He's like a rock and roll manager to me, which I find fascinating. And Fenyon was a person who, who actually articulated the neo-impressionists. He could articulate the movement. And interestingly enough, he never had an actual book out under his name. He wrote the books anonymously, or pam pamphlets anonymously. He didn't want to bring any attention to himself whatsoever. And how I discovered Fenyon was actually through literature. Uh, Luc Sant put out a book, a compilation of his writings called Novel in Three Lines. And one of Fenyon's job as a writer, or a journalist, quote-unquote, was to write the news of the day, but only using three sentences. In a way, it was sort of like Twitter of its time. And so in French papers, I'm not sure about other cultures and languages, is you look at the news, but it's only three sentences long each story. So I'm just going to read examples of this book from New York. For example, Catherine Rosetto of Toulon, mother of four, got out of the way of a freight train. She was then run over by a passenger train. <laughs> v. Petit of Mazarie Saint Genevieve, a scene, wanted to die happily. He drank two liters of wine and one of spirits and, in fact, died. His mother, finding his daughter, 19, insufferably austere, Julia, watchmaker of St. Etienne, killed her. It is true that he has 11 children left. And that's how I discovered. And this is Tosh Berman for our book, DAP. Thank you.